We're here in Amsterdam, New York, and this, it's lock 11 right back there, and we were able to get a spot on the wall. They do have three power pedestals, so that's a good thing. And this stretch between lock E11 and lock E12, lock E12 will be there in about 18, 20 minutes. And our intention today is to do six locks and be at Little Falls for a couple days. It's one of our favorite places. So it's the middle of the week and it's mid-September. So there should be no issue getting a place there. And we're also gonna take advantage. They have laundry there, nice little town. Should be some cool weather. This is the scenery and it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful ride uh, up the Mohawk River. Approaching Lock 12, Tribes Hill. We have talked to the lockmaster. We are good with a uh, going in here when he's ready. I haven't seen the doors open yet, so I'm just gonna bump it back just a little bit. Just bring it to idle. Rev says she sees the red light, so we'll just throttle back. I don't see any wind out there. There's no wind at all. So this should be a fairly easy 11 foot ride. Up. Yeah, Reva says she shouldn't need my help out there. She's going to try to gra grab a uh, mid-line. Beautiful scenery around here, and you can start to see uh, vehicle traffic out there in New York State Thruway. And you can see signs of civilization all of a sudden popped up. And again, this is the New York State Thruway, and you can see the golden arches are there. Um, back through the trees there, uh, off to my left can't see it anymore was a pilot fine J there's a travel center up here so lots of civilization coming up one of the things that you need to be cautious of is these buoys that are out here kind of get moved around once in a while stay in the middle of them sometimes they move them intentionally sometimes they get moved unintentionally maybe a barge catches them or something like that but uh, in any case watch your navigation visually on the Erie Canal because the charts sometimes even though they're electronic whatever you're using may or may not get updated so uh, if you're using an auto dock to dock system or auto routing auto guidance whatever it is that line that it draws may be based on the position it knows on the chart and it doesn't respect a, the fact that the Canal Corporation came out here and moved them around because of uh, dredging. So, just something to be aware of. Well, there is some debris caught up on one of the buoys. And up ahead, we see our next lock, which is lock 13, called Yost's. Not much going on, so uh, if you're inclined to go through at a faster speed, be at it. We're just kind of keeping at it at uh, our low economy cruise speed here and enjoying the scenery. Nice cool day, plenty of time to get where we're going. We got an early start today. There's really no rush. Well, here we are. Another train. We heard the whistle blowing. And the other thing is this area here marked by a hazard buoy right there. And you will see it on the chart as well. A hazard out there. So it gets you close to the uh, north bank starboard side so be aware of that if you're just coming down and steering and then you look up you think you're in the center and uh, you shouldn't be in the center at this point right here this is uh, just to the east of green 323 you'll see that little obstruction that's out there under the water that would <coughs> probably ruin your day if you hit that well, there is Kanajahari Park. We're coming up on the lock, and I did confirm with the town clerk there that there is no power. Um, they are getting a grant to 
get that fixed but it is a beautiful park setting and the town is just right there as we pan over here we can see we're going under a bridge here so uh, Cano Joe Harry uh, Rev has told me Cano Joe Harry and we're coming up on the lock and I'm going to give the lock a call apparently there is a boat coming eastbound in the chamber and Rev has got the spy glasses out there she's going to look at it is that a boat in there yes yeah there's a boat in there so there's no rush for us they'll be lowering that boat and uh, once they lower that boat we'll be able to go in so just coming out of lock 15 Fort, Fort Plain and it does look like there is some power there whether or not you could reach your cord over to that um, from the lock wall all right there are some of the uh, logs and treachery that can await you so you got to keep your eyeballs tuned in to what's ahead of you I don't see any more up here yeah there's more out to that way but we're uh, we're on autopilot right now steering with the heading hold function and steering around debris water level is high due to the a good three day soaking rain so what that did was that raised the water level and some of this debris that was probably sitting on the shore now washing down the Mohawk River so uh, I had talked to you in uh, the lock video about how a system miles away can affect a water level and we've seen instances of that already just with the debris but also because the water level is high that bridge clearance at that lock back there was reduced so if you are close to that you know 19.7 if you're on the loop you're doing a you know boat that can get under the 19.7 bridge in uh, Chicago uh, however you know you may have your uh, mast up and thinking you can go it really you got to plan on about 21 feet for the Erie Canal the Eastern Erie Canal and the Oswego and uh, of course 15 for that Western Erie Canal portion which someday we intend to do not in this boat lowest I can get is about 15 and a half and then I would have to take off my radar dome and I'm just not willing to do that and it would be too close anyway well thank you to the lockmaster at lock 14 we are giving out goodie bags and uh, I guess maybe the word has gone out or something but we were rewarded with a cup of freshly picked little grape sized tomatoes here and they are just delicious with my sandwich that Rev has prepared for me, so uh, thank you. We have just exited lock 16. And here's a big sign, Rev says the port, Thai port side at lock 17. So Thai, yeah, right there is a big sign. It says, yeah, and uh, there is a note, yeah, lock 17, yeah. So lock 16, you've got walls over here to be able to tie off and spend the night if you had to. So lock 16, that was St. Johnsville. Lock 17 is the big one on the Erie Canal. And we'll be going up 40 feet there. And as the sign said, tie on the port side. Well, here it is, lock 17. We have the green light and we can see the guillotine gate is raised. You can see that long lock wall where you can tie up. Sometimes you're gonna have to tie up while they uh, lock people eastbound. Similar on the other side. You can also stay overnight there underneath that bridge. It is 
high the the highest lift lock other than one up in uh, Canada goes up 40 feet and highest lift lock that has a guillotine gate where it is raised above the boat now it says it's 20 feet and so if you have a boat that is pushing it if the pool level is high you know could be a challenge because uh, I don't think they can raise it much more than it is raised right now probably fully open we are out of lock 17 what an impressive lock town of Little Falls over there to the right a little shallow water alarm here eight feet we must have passed over something it's now 15 feet we're going up to Canal Harbor at Little Falls. Really a not to be missed stop. I don't know how we missed it on the first loop. I think it's because we were so we were so busy and we were also on that first loop. We still had a dirt house and we had a lot of things that we had to get back to. We were on a schedule to be able to get back to Dallas. So uh, it may have impacted our decision not to stay at Little Falls and move up to where we had put the boat uh, for a month while we went back and took cover took care of summer activities and house issues so a lot better when there's no schedule